If you guys have been keeping up with the news about Russia, then you might know that not that long ago, Russia has passed the new so-called digital draft law. According to which, essentially, Russian males are now gonna be able to get drafted into the Russian army basically by getting an email, as opposed to getting a physical draft letter and then having to actually sign it to be obliged to go to the draft military office. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, then check out my video on this topic. I actually talked about this before. But basically, according to this law, a Russian male that received this so-called electronic draft draft letter must enlist in the army within 20 days or they will be banned from leaving Russia. Well, these electronic draft letters are actually going to be sent out to Russian men through a kind of an e-government app known as Gos Usugi. Gos Usugi is essentially a super app which allows you to find out about your taxes, book a visit to a governmental clinic, order some sort of documents from the government, etc, etc, etc. And now, after the start of the special military operation, the Gos Usugi app is also used to disseminate propaganda. And believe it or not guys, as a Russian citizen, I have also been getting these propaganda messages. Hello Blazers, Siri Boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, coming at you live from an Airbnb in Serbia. And in today's video guys, we're gonna be talking about how Russia is using its e-governmental services system to message propaganda to its citizens and react to some of it because I have received plenty. But before we get into it, I need to quickly explain what Gosu Sugi is. It's essentially a website and an app which you're not really obliged to register in as a Russian citizen. However, most Russian citizens have an account there because having an account there basically makes your life a lot easier in Russia. You can book a consultation with a doctor without actually having to go to the hospital physically. Using it, you can pay for it like your speeding tickets. And there's more where that came from. And honestly, you guys know that I love to shit pretty much on anything that the Putin government does. However, Gosu Sugi was one of those things in Putin's Russia that was actually sort of decent and modern. And since I have an account, Gosusugi basically sends me a weekly mail of Z propaganda. So here I am with my mail and uh, for example of a regular mail you would usually get from Gososugi. Here's one for example which is like reminded me that essentially I have to pay my taxes until the 3rd of December. Or for example here's an email saying that my passport is ready, right? So nothing too crazy or should I say nothing too crazy. <laughs> However, guys, like I said, when the special military operation started, the rhetoric of uh, the messages that this app sends has changed a lot, and now it's a little bit insane. This was sent to me on May 9th. Wish victory to the warriors on the front. Hello, in the wake of the 9th of May, which is, you know, the day of victory in Russia, the People's Front Movement, so which is some, you know, Putin, Putin's youth type organization, you know, and Gosu Slugi are organizing uh, wishes for uh, soldiers on the front. The volunteers of the People's Front will send a postcard with the words of encouragement to the uh, warriors in the zone of the special military operation. How to participate? Number one, open up the service wish and victory to the soldiers on the front. So yes, this is like a governmental service now. You can uh, pay for your parking tickets, book a visit to a doctor, and wish victory to the warriors in the special military operation. Okay. Write a short wish, send your application, it will be checked, printed on a postcard, and sent to the front. Well, you know, I just don't think I will personally. <laughs> You know, sounds like fun and stuff, but I just don't think I will, so... Here's another one which I got literally just a week later after this. The people change the country. Submit some ideas to develop Russia. <laughs> Hello, using the platform Strong Ideas for a new time, anybody can submit an idea, a socially relevant initiative or a project, and make their own impact on developing the country. So essentially this is an email about another program where people can submit their ideas on how to uh, make Russia better. You know, the thing is, I don't think the Russian government is gonna like my ideas of, on how to make Russia better. <laughs> Because it involves them not existing, you know, that's like a big part of it, so, uh, I just don't think they would like to hear my ideas, so, you know, I guess I'm just gonna keep it to myself. Here's another one I got on May 3rd. Day of remembrance of those who passed away in Odessa. On the 2nd of May of 2014, a terrible tragedy happened that we have no right to forget. The Odessa version of Hatin, in a fire which a part of our Russian world has died. And then here we have a little uh, poem by Olga Starushko from uh, a book of poetry called Poesia Ruskova Leta, uh, which means poetry of the Russian summer. Мёртвых некому оплакать. Столб огня и дыма подымался над всеми запертыми в храме. Как бы ни летело время, жжётся это пламя. The poem is dark shit. First, 
first of all. And at the bottom here it says, this date concerns all of us. I'm sure a lot of you guys have no idea what this email is actually talking about. So essentially they're talking about the uh, trade union's house fire that happened in Odessa, Ukraine on the 2nd of May of 2014. This was pretty much the time after the revolution in Ukraine. And it was a time where a bunch of pro-Russian forces were doing pro-Russian protests in eastern Ukraine. And there were also pro-Maidan Ukrainians that were essentially all turned into a huge clash during which a large amount of these pro-Russian supporters essentially got locked up in this trade union's house building. A fire started in the building and some of these people died. So essentially this was part of this whole series of events at that time in eastern Ukraine where essentially these pro-Russian protesters that a lot of the times were backed funded by the Russian government, or a lot of the times even sent from Russia. But these people essentially tried to uh, stir up some separatist ideas in the people of Eastern Ukraine to basically join Russia. And essentially Russian propaganda turned this story into a sort of a classic Z lore, you know what I mean? It's like a classic propaganda tale about how, you know, the terrible Ukrainian Nazis, you know, burnt a bunch of, you know, Russians in that building. So, you know, essentially they're all Nazis and, you know, everything Russia's doing is completely justified. And the story has been twisted and turned to many times by Russian propaganda at this point, right? And here in this email, we have uh, Gososugi calling this event the Odessa version of Hatyn. Now, if you guys are not aware of what Hatyn is, you should watch Come and See, I guess. But basically, Hatyn was a village in Belarus that was destroyed by the SS Wanger Brigade during the Second World War, and uh, essentially hundreds of people were burned alive. And here we have Gososugi comparing the events in Odessa in 2014, and essentially comparing Ukrainians to literal Nazis, and uh, comparing the these Odessa clashes to a uh, genocide perpetrated by the Nazis in Belarus. Absolutely fucking distasteful. I mean, what I even gotta say here? I have no words. I honestly have no words. Like, what is this if not like utmost disrespect for Soviet and Russian history? This is a fucking joke. So yes, these are also the kinds of emails you get as a Russian citizen if you're uh, if you're trying to use a website that you know allows you to you know book a doctor appointment. Absolutely ridiculous. Let's check out some more. Become a participant of the anniversary edition of the Victory Quiz. Hello. On the 27th of April of 2023, a patriotic event known as the uh, Quiz of Victory is going to be conducted. 20 winners will be invited to Moscow for the Day of Victory in 2024. Join in order to check your knowledge about the military history of Russia. So yeah, they were throwing some kind of nationwide quiz about like World War II or whatever. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of the correct answers in this quiz are not going to be historically correct answers. They're going to be more so historically correct answers according to the Russian government. But I was like... <sighs> Can you imagine any other of the allied nations that, you know, had their parts in destroying Nazi Germany conducting something like this and then like spamming its citizens to promote it? <laughs> this is insane, man. Here's another good one that I like. Let's help the defenders and their families. All Russian campaign, hashtag, we're in this together. Hello, the volunteers of hashtag, we're in this together are helping out the mobilized and their families. So yeah, the mobilized are the defenders of Russia because of course Russia, you know, had to be defended. <laughs> because what is happening right now is defending. I mean, actually what is happening right now might be defended because <laughs> because Russia is just like a failed state at this point. Like, <laughs> Kiev in three days, my ass. Which is great, by the way, because I wouldn't want them to actually get Kiev in three days. So yeah, here it basically says that you can get uh, help from volunteers if you've been mobilized or if somebody from your family has been mobilized. So uh, go out there, guys. We got you, right? That's the whole meaning of this email. So, you know, another great one. Here's another good one, which I got uh, when Russia banned Instagram. Since the directors of the social network Instagram, in violation of internet International law, that's something Russia cares a lot about, by the way, international law, something Russia has never violated in its, in its, you know, in its, in its history. For the first time in history, has allowed hate speech only directed at Russians. The general prosecution of Russia has decided to ban the social network in Russia. Inciting violence towards people, uh, essentially based on their citizenship or their nationality, is part of a crime that is characterized as a genocide. So essentially, according to them, Instagram allowing users to shit on Russians is uh, characterized as genocide. I mean, here's the thing, guys. I've personally talked about this previously in the video, and I said that this is kind of like a slippery slope and stuff. And personally, I believe that this move makes sense in regards to, you know, essentially allowing Ukrainians to expose what is actually going on and sort of, you know, vent. Because I do think it would be kind of, you know, cynical if Ukrainians, on top of literally being bombed, 
would also get like banned on Instagram for speaking out about what's going on, right? So that does make sense to me. However, you know, in the overall sense, allowing like hate speech towards Russians specifically is kind of weird. But anyway, that's not even the point. So here it says, we need to be able to guarantee the good mental health of our citizens. You know, guys, I would say that I am a good example that shows that Russia doing what they're doing is uh, not exactly beneficial for the mental health of the Russian citizens. <laughs> but yeah, we need to make sure to uh, guarantee the good mental health of our citizens. First and foremost, kids and teenagers. Of course, why won't somebody think of the kids, you know? Russia thinks about kids a lot. Defend them from bullying and hate speech online. I would say by far the last paragraph is my favorite. Since Russia is a country that has its own very competitive online platforms, such as uh, the social networks VK and Odnoklassniki, <laughs> Yeah, Nakwasniki is definitely a very competitive social network. Maybe if you're Baba Zina, который, блядь, 78 лет, наверное, тогда Одноклассники это конкурентоспособная интернет-платформа, иначе я хуй знает. <laughs> Oh, Боже. So yeah, VK and the class, Nikki, that reach out tens of millions of uh, users. We hope that your transfer to these internet spaces happens quickly. And in perspective, you'll find new uh, opportunities for communication and for running businesses. Your Roskomnadzor. <laughs> Well, I don't really know what to say because, as, as you know, as evidence has shown, nobody has fucking switched to VK and Nakwasniki, from Instagram at least, because these are not even replacements for Instagram. And funnily enough, everybody still uses Instagram in Russia, even though, like, Meta and Instagram are considered, like, extremists in Russia now. Literally, governmental officials still use Instagram in Russia. Regular people, I mean everybody. You just have to use a VPN, but everybody in Russia is still on Instagram, so... This is just so pathetic, like, this is really like a fucking post-breakup email type shit, you know what I mean? Like, when some dude got, like, broken up with and got blocked by his ex, he then still has more to say, so he goes and, like, finds the ex's email and sends her a message there. This is the fucking email that guy sends. <laughs> it's just absolutely incredible, and that's like, you know, that's kind of like Russia's entire essence at this point. It's just this, like, Russia is that incel of a country, really. Like, that's just how it feels. It's a toxic incel of a country that does, you know, a little shooting, and as a result, not only, you know, ruins the lives of others, but also ruins the lives of, the, you know, their family and the people closest to them. Wow, that was a great metaphor, guys. I'm very, very proud of myself. <laughs> and it just goes on and on and on like this, and basically, I keep on getting more and more of these messages. And at least, you know, I'm glad that these are not, you know, military draft messages that I'm getting for now, but, uh, it's still pretty bad. So yes, these are the kind of uh, propaganda messages, propaganda emails that Russia bombards and spams its citizens with. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, hopefully you had some fun watching me react to this stuff. If you guys did, then please make sure to slap the like on it. As well guys, as always, if you want to support me additionally, if you want to support my channel, then please make sure to go over to link down in the description, become a YouTube member. It's like YouTube's own version of Patreon, like a monthly donation thing, it's basically the best way to support me. And yeah guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video though, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.